Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, out in virtual world. Um, welcome to the 2020, 2021 Village of Bartlett board meeting for April 7, 2020. Um, we're starting this evening's board meeting um, with a public hearing. Um, we'll be reviewing 2020, 2021 proposed budget. And this will officially be the public hearing for that budget. And with that, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Kammerer. Present. Herbin Earl. Present. Beanie. Present. Gabrenya. Absent, but coming. Hopkins. Here. Ranky. Present. President Wallace. Here. As I mentioned, um, we'll be going through the, um, this is the official 20, year 2020 2021 um, budget hearing um, for those of you in the audience that um, would like to make a comment um, there's two ways that you can do that uh, you know where the raise your hand function is on this um, uh, venue then you can raise your hand and our uh, uh, administrator of the call will will um, unmute your line and then again announce yourself and your name and address um, for the record. And we'll also have, uh, if, if for some reason you can't see the raise your hand, there is a chat function that you could use as well. So we'll be looking for that once the hearing is rolling. So um, with that- Mayor, sorry to interrupt. Um, I just wanna let you know, Dr. Cabrenia is in under a participant. Uh, I, just, I just promoted her, so she is okay. now in. Thank All you. Right. Let the record be noted that um, Trustee Cabrenia um, just joined our public hearing. So with that, I will turn it over to um, our village administrator, Paula. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the proposed um, budget presented for the most part has not been adjusted for the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the village, however, has developed a plan with steps to be taken to reduce expenses and preserve funds as information becomes available. The COVID-19 pandemic presents several significant challenges and there is no um, great way to diminish the uncertainty about the duration and the impact of the pandemic on the local economy. However, the plan that we have put together is a multi-step approach which allows the village to scale the financial response as well as well as responding to the situation as it unfolds. Nearly $5,935,750 have been identified in total um, potential expenditures reductions in the stepped response. While the steps appear um, in, a, in a numerical fashion, one through four, um, the financial conditions may prompt the village to use a mix of all of the tiers of the response to the crisis. Deciding when to implement the actions in the steps and to what extent will be challenging given the, unusual de the usual delay in receiving information about revenue performance. Steps one and two have already been um, executed by the village, including the declaration of disaster by the village board and the reduction of expenditures um, related to training, hiring, and capital uh, equipment purchases. Decisions about the potential action steps will take place throughout the balance of the year, and every attempt will be made to align the response action steps with the duration and the degree of the crisis. The proposed revenues for the fiscal year 2021 total $96 million and include $6.2 million in borrowing for capital projects. The remaining revenues are divided among property taxes, other taxes, services, service charges, and other revenue. The proposed general property tax levy is to remain flat from last year. This is the ninth consecutive year that the levy has remained flat or declining. Sales tax and income tax are the most sensitive to the economy of the major revenues and will be monitored monthly. The total proposed budget for the fiscal year 2020-21 
is $72 million. This is a 5% decrease from last year. The overall budget decrease is primarily due to the decrease in capital projects. The total operating budget is $50.9 million, which is a 3% increase from last year. The increase in the uh, operating portion of the budget includes a 5% increase in the general fund, 1% in the water fund, and 10% in the sewer fund. The increase in the sewer fund is for debt service related or um, to capital improvements. As I mentioned earlier, hiring, equipment purchases, and training will be held off for six months to keep the expenditures down until the pandemic crisis is better assessed. Operating expenditures can be divided into five primary uses. A little over two-thirds of the operating expenditures are for public safety and public works. Public works includes streets, water, sewer, and parking, and the remaining third is divided among the general government, golf, and debt service. The capital portion of the proposed budget is $15,084,080. The capital portion of the budget varies from year to year based upon the individual projects we have scheduled. Capital projects for the budget are divided into five broad categories, water, sewer, streets, economic development, and other projects. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Um, other projects include the annual streets maintenance program, improvements in the um, Brewster Creek and Bluff City TIF developments, and engineering for the Bittersweet Wastewater Treatment Plant Facility. Roughly four million of the projects to be paid from the village sources have been identified as projects that can be deferred if necessary. The budget year begins on May 1st, 2020 and goes through April 30th, 2021. And Mayor um, Todd and I will um, be happy to answer any questions that you or the public have. Thank you, Mayor Todd. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam Administrator. I know that um, uh, not long ago, I spoke with the Administrator and um, some of the board had mentioned some um, of these changes uh, to myself. And I just want to commend the staff um, at this hearing for um, really taking a deep dive into what we can uh, tweak what we can um, eliminate um, and a very thoughtful approach to um, a real difficult situation where it's a moving target. <clears throat> as, as the administrator mentioned, we don't know um, what kind of relief um, may flow down and may not flow down to the municipality level. Um, so that's a really big unknown uh, factor. Uh, and I believe that we have a real thoughtful plan um, marked out to uh, in different steps and stages, as the administrator had mentioned, um, in order to weather this uh, in the best possible way. So with that, um, I will open it up to um, the board if they have any questions or comments, and then we'll open it up to the general public for questions and comments. <coughs> I have a question. Um, who decides uh, what capital projects uh, we defer and uh, which ones we don't? Because if we approve this budget, we're in essence approving all the capital projects in it. So what will determine when they get deferred and how they get deferred? Well, I in terms of the, our capital projects, and we're going to see that on our agenda tonight, um, with the, the project that we have on there for approval. So there's a couple of different factors. One, um, the timing of the project, um, when that decision has to be made um, for the project to be completed um, and, and the funds expended. Uh, expended. Secondly, how, you know, where the different funding sources are coming from. And third, um, whether or not that project can be contracted and reduced in cost. So I think it's going to be a, 
um, running target, but those those projects would, of course, when they're bid, come to the board for review. So we will be able to adjust them um, appropriately going forward. Thank you. I would, I, I would just add also, uh, Trustee Hopkins, that um, I think that there's some um, most likely consensus of the board that only the uh, projects that directly affect public safety right now will be um, priorities. So that's, uh, that's one measure I would imagine the board would all agree to. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Good, sorry. I hope staff agrees with that also. Yeah. Any other uh, comments or questions from the board? No. And at this time also, if there are anyone in the audience that um, would like to make a comment or pose a question um, in this hearing, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand or shoot a chat out. Um, there's a chat function on this. You can either ask your question that way and we can repeat it for you with your name and address or um, you can actually be unmuted and chime in and ask the question. So I will give us a few minutes here for the board to contemplate any other questions, and then also for the general public to um, address the board. <clears throat> Chris, are there any um, questions or hands raised? No, Mayor, there is not. With that, I will, uh, if there are no other comments from the board, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the hearing. So moved. Second. I believe it was moved by Trustee Kammer, seconded by Trustee Daney. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Kammer? Yes. Carbonell? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. yes. Daney? Yes. Cabrena? Did I hear a yes? She's muted. She's muted. She needs to get unmuted. There we Can go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. I was just calling the roll. Cabrena? Um, yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. The public hearing is now adjourned. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Bartlett board meeting for April 7, 2020. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk again to please call the roll. Trustee Kammerer? Here. Carbonero? Here. Amy? Here. Cabrena? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Present. President Wallace? Here. Roll call. Um, the last time we attempted the Pledge of Allegiance, it didn't go so well <laughs> with everybody's voice. So we will say the Pledge of Allegiance um, with everybody muted. We'll just, um, instead of the Pledge of Allegiance here, I suggest we do a, a few minutes of silence on the call just to um, recognize um, all of the families of lost ones and um, just some of the huge challenges that our country is facing right now. So we'll just give it a minute or two here. Thank you all. With that, it brings us to our consent agenda this evening. The consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. There's going to be no additional discussion um, of items on the consent agenda. Um, with that, I will ask if anyone has anything they would like to add or remove from the consent. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to remove F6 from the, con from the consent agenda and, and put it to a, a meeting in the future. 
All right. So noted, so we'll amend it with that, um, that motion or that um, action. Right now it's the consent agenda and you're just removing that item, which is F6 from the consent agenda. Yeah, we'll just remove it. So anybody else have anything else they would like to have removed from the consent agenda? I'd like to remove C1. Okay. Is that a chair request, uh, Mr. Moraz, or is that something that the board I'll can right do? Right now, it's a suggestion. So um, there should be a motion to approve of the consent agenda, uh, pardon me, to amend the consent agenda to remove items C1 and F6 from the consent agenda. That would be the first motion. Um, anything else anyone would like to do with the consent agenda this evening? No. Hearing none, I will enter. So just so everybody's clear, um, we'd be amending the consent agenda to remove um, C1, resolution adopting the Village of Bartlett budget for fiscal year 2020-2021, and F6, a resolution approving of an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Elgin, the Village of Bartlett for the setting and sharing of costs the resurfacing of Lambert Lane in both municipalities. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to amend the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee Hopkins. Will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Trustee Daney? No. Uh, Cabrera? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? No. Four yeses, two noes. Carries. Yeah, carried. Sent. So now um, you would motion need a motion. carries. To entertain, entertain a motion to amend the cons uh, amended consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee Hopkins. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Cabrera? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? No. Danny. We have to move forward on this, so I have no choice. I have to vote yes. That motion carries. Brings us down to our, why they change this up? That's on the consent, that's on the consent. Uh, treasurers, no presidents. Uh, questions, anybody have questions for staff at this point? I have a question. As, uh, as I uh, have done in the past, uh, I've always spoken at this portion of the meeting. But tonight, it's with a heavy heart that uh, I start my, uh, my little uh, introduction on this. Uh, uh, Brian Moraz recently lost his father, Ed, who was a uh, former village attorney. And Brian, our sympathy to you and your family. And I'm very sorry for your loss. And if we could just take a moment here and just reflect a little bit on what's happening in this world and the people that we've lost and whatnot, then I would like to, to continue. But I'd like to take a few seconds here and just uh, be, just uh, take a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Now, on to a lighter note. Uh, I have uh, a couple of anniversaries and uh, I'm very proud to say that, uh, uh, well, a single anniversary, actually, for, uh, I'm very proud to say this, Roberta Grill, she's been with the, uh, the village for 30 years. And uh, I know for a fact she started right out of high school. So, Roberta, congratulations on your 30 years. Congratulations, Roberta. 
And uh, as far as birthdays go, we have Christy Stone, our village uh, village planner. Her birthday is the 25th. And I would love to embarrass someone that serves on our board. Trustee Aaron Ranke has a birthday. I believe somebody told me it was your uh, 38th birthday. Could that be correct? Uh, yes, yes. Congratulations, that's the 13th. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna ask you all please to join with me in singing uh, Trusty Ranky, happy birthday. So we'll oh, start. This, and this, this, this be a nightmare. Really weird. <laughs> happy birthday to, hey, to you. you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday, happy Aaron birthday Ranky. Ranky. Happy birthday happy to, to you. you. Yay, happy, happy birthday, Aaron. Guys, don't give thank, up. Thank uh, you. Don't give up your day job. That's all I have. Aaron changed his home profession to um, to tutor. Also, I've heard so. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I love the singing. It sounds like it's in three D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any other I, questions or anything for staff that the board has right now? I yes, I do. Are you okay. Ready? I'm uh, Ray, are you finished? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, and I have a question for staff. Um, I'm certainly, you know, not opposed to doing anything we can uh, as far as the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis uh, is concerned. We obviously want to do everything for the safety of the people in our community. <clears throat> but I have a little concern about our uh, waste removal and the fact that uh, uh, the... Uh, refuge continues to be picked up, uh, but the contract that we signed with has been uh, uh, diminished. And I'm just wondering if there's going to be some rebate back to the residents since they're not picking up the uh, uh, outside the trash of the containers. And I'm hopeful that we can uh, see something come back to the residents since they they still have the trucks out. They still they have the opportunity to wear gloves and masks. They're not in contact with uh, groups of people. They don't have, you know, mucus or drops or moisture being contacted with them. So I'm just thinking that perhaps um, they could probably give back a little bit to the village in some way, and to the resident. I would have to agree. With I would have to agree with your comments, uh, Trustee uh, Kammerer. Um, I've, I've recently spoke to a, a couple of drivers, and their actual overtime has been cut now because it's it doesn't take them that long to actually pick up the trash now. So there is a, a cost savings for them to operate in this manner. Right. Well, I, I'd be happy to take that. Uh, this is Scott speaking. I actually spoke to Groot, uh, well, quite frankly, every day about, about their issues. Um, and, and a few key points. The service in terms of white goods are delayed, not eliminated. So if you have a white good in your house or your garage, that will still get picked up at the cost of Groot. Um, another few key points is that Luckily for us, when we went through the new contract, the, the residents are, because of your due diligence, are paying less now than they were three years ago. And will be paying less in 2022 than they were a few years ago. And I think that the cost that accounts for white goods is, is pretty minimal. So if we were actually to break down that cost, the uh, average single family home right now is paying $4.69 per pickup per week. And 80 to 90% of that cost is the standard garbage and recycling. And they just wanna um, really minimize their risk as, as the COVID can last on materials for, for multiple days. Um, we can certainly push them on the white goods that is in the contract, uh, like Dr. Kammerer stated it, we, we can certainly push them but it's only been two weeks and the actual cost is, is, is probably less than, you know, 50 cents uh, for the residents. So that's kind of where we stand with them. And they exclaim that it's not a, a eliminated, it's just delayed. Um, and that's the latest that, that I've had with them. Uh, well, 
Let me jump in and make a Pro quick, quick suggestion here. Why don't um, staff um, contact um, Groot and see if they're having other um, requests from municipalities to do the same thing. I, I asked that mayor, they have not had any other requests. Um, now, I'm not saying that's all for towns with different waste haulers, but in terms of Groot, they have not received that request. I think uh, a lot of that is maybe they started at a different time, depending on the route. We're on week two. I'm not sure where other towns stand, but they have not been asked that by other communities yet. Okay. Uh, can I ask something? Um, I'm just curious. I mean, at this time when we're at a shelter at home, it is not uncommon for people to be take on home projects and do things. And so they get the extra scrap, the extra waste that they put out at the curb typically, you know, if they, if they didn't have restrictions on things. So I'm just wondering, do you think it would be possible that we could talk to Groot and if somebody wanted to put out extra waste product that Groot could supply an extra tote to people who asked for that and that they could actually have a refuse tote of some sort that would allow them to put scrap waste out as well? We, we, can ask, we can ask them that. I mean, a lot of the things that we've done in the past, and they have been pretty generous with it um, on case-by-case -case basis. So we can certainly talk to them about it. And, and I just wanted to hit one more point in terms of their workload. They actually got 1,250 tons of garbage this past March. Last year, they got 800 tons. So they're not eliminating their workload. They're just eliminating their procedures. But um, we can absolutely talk to them. And just like a lot of the other issues that, that we face, we can speak to the residents on an individual basis to see if we can help them with that. I hope that, I hope that answers your question. We'll, we'll, we'll be in touch with them. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Trustee Cameron. Anything else anyone would have uh, questions for staff at this time? I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Now that we've removed the, the budget from approval, we have until May 1st to approve this budget or the village stops operating? That's that just if it doesn't, uh, that's just if it doesn't pass uh, as, as um, it's proposed. And quite frankly, it's a, a real crazy, uh, it's, a, it's a version of a budget right now that nobody can expect. Um, nobody can expect staff to come up with uh, uh, changes this quickly on this magnitude. So okay. I'm certain we'll pass, pass the budget when it gets down to the Finance and Golf Committee just a matter of certain um, amendments and adjustments that uh, board, the board will be able to tackle as those things um, come up. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Trustee Kim. The, the, the second question is item six that we removed from uh, the, the uh, consent agenda. Um, I think maybe we should continue to negotiate with Elgin, but just... Uh, I think... Uh, I, but push it, push it forward as far as a date, um, because if we if we bow out of the negotiations, uh, I have this, uh, just a, an odd right. feeling that it's going to cost us more than if we didn't participate in the negotiations. Because I'm sure they're going through the same thing, but just just to stop discussing it with them all together somewhere along the line, I think Bartlett's going to end up paying a little bit more. That's not I that's can, not what's going on, Trustee Carbonero. Right. Um, they're still in negotiations with Elgin. Their attorney wants to add some things to the, to the uh, contract, I suppose. And uh, perhaps we could have Dan Dinges speak to that if he's online, if, if he's on here. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Trustee Cam, you're correct. Uh, late this afternoon, we got word from Elgin that their attorney had some, it sounds like pretty uh, minor changes that they want to make to the agreement. So they were planning to have it on their agenda tomorrow. And they asked, or they said that they were gonna bring it to the April 22nd meeting of, uh, of their board meeting. So since they're looking to make changes, I suggested that we remove the item. We'll work through the changes and hopefully bring it back to the board on the 21st. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Trustee Carabinero for bringing that up. That's a good point. Um, 
Anyone else have questions or uh, anything for staff? No. Hearing none, we'll move on to the town hall portion of the meeting this evening. Um, during town hall, obviously it's a little tricky for everyone. Um, uh, during town hall, if you do wanna to speak to uh, address the board, um, please raise your hand on the functionality there or send a chat. And um, when you do start speaking, please uh, state your name and your address for the record. Chris, um, let me know. I'll give you a couple minutes here if there's anybody that has um, the desire to address the board at this time. Yeah, I don't see anyone raising their hand, Mayor. Give me, a, give them a minute. They might be walking back over their computer yeah. from the refrigerator. <laughs> well, I think uh, six of the seven attendees are actually village staff, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so um, with that being said, we'll move on to the standing committee reports this evening. Uh, first standing committee report is building and zoning, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. Items A1 and A2 <clears throat> were covered under the consent agenda tonight. That's all we have under building and zoning. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Um, Community and Economic Development Committee, Chairman Gabrenya. Thank you, Mr. President. We do not have anything under our committee this evening. Thank you, Chairman Gabrenya. Um, Finance and Golf Committee, Chairman Daney. Thank you, Mr. President. We did have uh, an item on agenda. It was on consent, however, uh, it was removed from consent and it's a resolution adopting the Village of Bartlett budget for the fiscal year 2020 and 2021. And with that, I'll turn it over to our Finance Director, Todd. I, please. Actually, what I'll, I would like you to do because it was on consent is make the motion and let's get a second and then we'll have discussion. So, All right. Then. I'm sorry. You want me to make a motion? Put this make, back. Make make a motion, and then right. we'll have a second, and then I'll open it up for discussion, and Todd can take any questions. Gotcha. All right. Uh, make a motion that uh, we uh, uh, add to the agenda the resolution adopting the Village of Bartlett budget for fiscal year 2020 through 2021. Already on the. Say. Yeah. You just need to add. Uh, there should be some wording on the form itself. Yeah, do you, Ray. do you want me to read? Do you want me to read the motion? Sure. I, I don't have it in front. Okay. Yeah, the motion says I move to approve resolution 2020 dash 29. 29, a resolution adopting the fiscal 2020 2021 budget in the amount of seventy two million thirty nine thousand nine hundred and thirty four dollars. And with that being said, I will just interject here and let the audience know and for the record that the motion was made. Um, just uh, Ray, uh, uh, Trustee Danny, if you can confirm your motion. Correct. Yes. So the trustee, uh, uh, motion was made by Trustee Danny. Can I, is there a second? Second. A motion made by Trustee Danny, seconded by Trustee Carbonero. Is there any discussion? I don't know why we have to rehash this again. We beat it to death so many times. And uh, we're continuing in, in basically uncharted waters. We have no idea what's going on. And uh, I don't see any reason to reopen this again at this point in time. I think it could be reevaluated on, on a regular basis, but uh, I think we beat this to death enough and I'm going to vote no. But this is a motion gonna, to approve. I'm gonna vote yes. This is not a motion to take it off the agenda or put it on oh, the agenda. No, you're right. I'm, you're right. I, I'm voting to approve the existing uh, resolution adopting the uh, budget. Yeah. That's what Thank you, Chairman Ranke or Chairman Daney. Is there any other discussion revolving this item? Yeah, I, I, I plan on voting no, just because I do not uh, agree with um, one of the capital projects that uh, is approved for this fiscal year and that uh, I know we've talked about it many times um, and that is the Devon excess flow plant and how we're building a pipeline to bittersweet. Um, I believe the Cook County residents are, are once again being double taxed when it comes to this pipeline. I think there's other avenues that could have been taken that uh, um, staff did not um, uh, choose to uh, investigate. Um, and I, I think that uh, 
we should have hired an actual specialist that actually deals with um, MWRD um, and an attorney that specializes in sewage and dealing with MWRD, and that wasn't the case. Um, so once again, um, Cook County residents are actually getting double taxed when it comes to this project. I hope it gets put on hold and I, uh, and I, I hope that uh, it doesn't move forward um, and we actually fix our sewage system and we might not even need this pipeline. So um, with I think, that- I think um, the experts would strongly disagree with you, Trustee Hopkins. Um, oh, I think the experts that we've spoken to, um, I, I believe that uh, Mr. Dingus probably has way more experience in this situation than you do, and he disagrees with you. Um, there's a lot of people that I've spoken to that disagree with you, and other mun municipalities that disagree with you. So I know that you've been talking about this for a long time, but you're the only one that's um, in disagreement with this particular um, situation in the budget. I appreciate your opinion, and uh, we can move on. We don't need to ha rehash this. I don't need uh, Mr. Dinge just to come back and say the same things that he's been saying for a long time. I'd like Mr. Dinges to ask uh, uh, how this system will actually function. Um, how did you guys plan on, I know you guys want to consolidate um, a, a pump or a, a dry well that's currently there. Um, so can you just talk about where the flow is actually coming from? Again, I will answer that uh, this evening um, during budget time. We've went through this. You've went through it one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Dingus. Um, we've had multiple people in a room going through this with you. <clears throat> and uh, at risk of all the other board members hearing the same thing that we've heard probably three or four times, um, Mr. Dingus, can you paraphrase quickly what Trustee Hopkins is asking? Sure. Um... The Devon Excess Flow Station has the flow coming from the MWRD area, and there is a lift station that takes the uh, DuPage area south of Devon. Um, what we're doing is we will be abandoning that lift station and the Devon Excess Flow Facility, creating one large lift station that will be able to handle both the MWRD flows and the DuPage water flows, and it'll be brought down to the bittersweet wastewater treatment plant. So in this one pipeline, the flow that's coming from DuPage County is gonna be in this pipeline? We will continue to use the pipeline that DuPage County is currently going through. DuPage will still <laughs> utilize that pipeline. There'll be a new pipeline built that will take the uh, MWRD area. So when the pump goes on, will any flow from DuPage County be in this one pipeline to Bittersweet? Uh, well, we're connecting into the existing pipe. So under normal situations, when we're not under high flow, the pump station will pump into the pipeline that is currently pumping the DuPage water down to Bittersweet. And then when, when we get a storm and uh, flows go up and we're taking on uh, the MWRD excess flow, then at that point, there's additional pumps that will pump to the, in this new force main that will bring it down the bittersweet. All that stuff is being, is under design right now and how it'll, and it'll be a flexibility, but basically we'll have two force mains, an existing one that will be utilized mainly for DuPage water flow and then this new pipeline that'll mainly be used for uh, the MWRD tributary area. I guess, I guess what I'm asking is, will DuPage excess flow go into this pipeline or will both pipelines be used simultaneously? Both pipelines will be used. Um, so are you I asking to, if, DuPage, if we can control where the water flows on the border of DuPage and Cook, which, which pipeline it goes into? Is that what you're asking? If we can control where that excess flow goes into the system right on the border. Is that what you're saying? I asked Dan Dinges if when you have excess flow, when it's <clears throat> raining heavily, 
will both pipes work simultaneously or will only one pipe work? Take the flow. I think that's still being designed because we're trying to minimize the size of the force main, the new force main that's going in. If we can utilize both pipelines at the same time, that will help us reduce that pipeline. But that's what's under design right now. So until they get to a point where they are comfortable um, on whether we can split the flows or put it all in one pipeline down, you know, when we get into the excess flow uh, situation, um, I don't know that answer yet, quite yet, um, but that's what they're working on. And if we can reduce the sizes of the pipe, that's what we're going to do. All right. I appreciate that, uh, Director Dinges. I, I was just stating that because right now, over the last two years, Cook County residents, when you look at your sewer portion of the bill, uh, the Cook County residents, their rates have gone up, and it's mainly for this particular pipeline. And if the pipes aren't being run, or the, if the water isn't going simultaneously into each individual pipe, then I don't know why Cook County is, you know, flipping the bill for this whole pipeline when you're actually receiving flow from DuPage County too. So, um, why would you say that a, Cook County is flipping the bill for the entire pipeline? This is a bonded project. Um, and you know, another you point, that? another, another point that, that might be uh, important is that one of the major problems that we have with, with excess flow is the connection point to the street. And we proposed solutions to that, which are very, very expensive and also expensive for those residents. Do you have a, I mean, if you have a, some additional suggestions on how to fix the primary main problem, uh, Trustee Hopkins, I'd be interested to hear that solution. Um, well, we've already gone over that. And, and we've gone over um, a lot of this over and over and over again. I, I really don't really appreciate the way you're talking to me right now. Um, you're acting very condescending. Um, Does anybody, uh, do, uh, okay, then let me, let me flip it over to the rest of the board. Does any other board have any other questions or comments? Yes. I'm fine. Uh, Dan, I'm fine. Um, can you tell me specifically what taxes we raised to fund this additional pipeline? Uh, no taxes. It's all through the rates. I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I, did, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat that? No taxes were raised to pay for this project. It's all through the rates. Okay. And the increase to the sewer rates is to um, accommodate the uh, smoke testing and repairs? It's well, in addition, those projects, in addition to the large capital projects, and we do have it broken up between Cook County and DuPage County, depending okay. on the project. So like the Devon project that Trustee Hopkins is talking about, Yes. That went towards the Cook County, the bittersweet uh, improvements are going to the DuPage County. And just to add, um, there are improvements down at the bittersweet plant uh, that we do have to make in order to accommodate the MWRD flows. And those were not proposed to be put on towards the Cook County residents I, is what okay. the plan was anyway. Okay, and then when we raised the sewer rates, did we raise just Cook County or did we raise Cook and DuPage? I believe we raised all three. Okay, thank you. Trustee Hopkins, I apologize if you felt that I was being short with you. Um, it's not my intention. It is my intention to make sure that the entire uh, voice of the board is heard. And it's also my intention to make sure that everybody gets accurate information when they listen to these um, presentations. And Oh, absolutely. I agree can't with just that. Be one, and it can't just be one trustee's opinion. Oh, I agree with that. Um, okay. I, I think I bring it up and you asked the question, what else can we do? Um, I know we talked about storage because obviously there's, as Director Dinges just said, there could be costs down the road to have all this excess flow sent up to bittersweet. So I know a lot of other communities have used storage in this situation and um, not sent it to a treatment plant because it's very costly to treat sewage. With that, I'll, I'll stop talking and you guys can approve your budget.
I believe it's the entire village's budget. And yes, also, why? I, I would also just make a comment that um, that I, I do appreciate uh, Trustee Hopkins' concerns. It's it's obviously um, he, he's done a lot of work on this. I don't want to I don't want to put any um, dampers on that. He's spent a lot of time looking into potential better ways to fix this issue. Um, and I know for a fact that the village has has looked into better ways. And there's um, certainly a disagreement as to how to move forward and fix it. Um, but with that, the, the board has talked about storage tanks. We've talked about this pipeline. We've talked about different options. And the board has voted to move forward and also bonded to move forward with this project. So with that, um, if there's any other con conversation around this topic, um, please, um, around the budget, actually. Any other items in the budget that we're voting on right now? There's been a motion and a second. If anybody has any other questions revolving, regarding the budget, um, now is the time to talk about it. And also, obviously, this moving target of a budget. Mayor, I believe we have a uh, motion on the floor and a second. I don't think there's any other questions. Can we have the roll? All right, um, the clerk, please call the roll. Uh, Trustee Hopkins? No. Rinky? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Cabrinha? Yes. A motion. Mr. President. Motion carries. Mr. President, that's all we have on our agenda for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Daney. Next item on our agenda this evening is under license and ordinance. Chairman Ranke? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Nothing on license or ordinance tonight. Thank you, Chairman Ranke. Police and Health Committee, Chairman Carbonero. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there are no items on the Police and Health Committee tonight. Thank you, Chairman Carbonero. Public Works Committee, Chairman Kammerer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, items one through five are on the consent agenda. And no, items number, number six was removed to a meeting later in the future. Uh, that was under the motion to uh, approve the consent agenda or amend it. I think so we need a motion to table it probably. Motion to table or to uh, continue item F6, this resolution approving of the intergovernmental agreement between Elgin and the village of Bartlett for the setting and sharing of cost of the resurfacing of Lambert Lane in both municipalities to either table it indefinitely or continue it to a date certain. Um, I believe we'll be okay um, to continue it to the next board meeting. Is that accurate? Um, do, I need to make that, do I need to make that motion? Yeah, go ahead and make a motion to continue it to the next board meeting. Yes, that, that should be good. All right, then I would make a motion that we continue item F6 uh, to the next board meeting in uh, the end of April. Okay, I believe our village attorney had read the actual resolution, so that should be sufficient. It was moved by Trustee Kammer, seconded by Trustee um, Danny. Danny. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Rinke? Yes. Kammer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Cabrinha? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. That motion carries. Um, that resolution will be moved and continued to the next meeting. With that, we'll bring up new business. Would anybody like to discuss any new business um, for the good of the village? I guess I would just reiterate um, uh, some of the things that the that staff has um, has put together as far as this um, COVID-19 um, uh, steps in order. Um, I believe the board um, had a chance to review an email that went out. I would, I would suggest, obviously it's a work in progress and um, certainly uh, any feedback um, on those suggested um, uh, ways to navigate this situation um, I'd love to have everybody's input on that. I'm sure staff would as well. Um, if there's anything in those in, in those materials that um, that you uh, want to discuss uh, or, or actually make some comments on, please get it back to staff, and we'll have a little bit more in-depth conversation um, regarding that. Um, uh, Madam Administrator, do you think we'll be, have that on um, the next board meeting? Just a discussion around those steps. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, uh, I think we will. Um, I, as I noted in my uh, comments during the hearing, I think this is something that we're going to be revisiting um, frequently over the next year as the um, different responses, both from the state and the federal level, um, to the pandemic uh, continue to evolve. So, you know, we will. We, I think it's going to be a, a living document for a while. Well, well stated. Um, we're also looking at uh, some information about how to um, uh, support our local businesses, those that provide us um, a sales tax and have provided us a sales tax over the years. So that'll be something else. Madam Administrator, you believe we'll be discussing that on the 24th as well? What we hope to do is bring a um, small business sales tax relief program to you. Um, we're working on um, some different models for that. Um, we're looking at a, you know, a pool of dollars that we can um, use to fund such a program and the parameters that would be involved with that, as well as the oversight um, and the um, review functions. So we're, we're trying to put that together um, for you to um, discuss at the April 21st meeting. Yeah. And again, I think that, um, in my opinion, that's something that uh, the uh, rebate of those tax uh, uh, taxes we received um, pro, rata, pro rata based on uh, their contribution to that particular um, municipality tax would be uh, something I would certainly support. Good. Um, any other new business that anybody would like to discuss? Um, any questions? Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Trustee Kammer, seconded by Trustee Ranke, I believe. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Kammer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Cabrenia? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. We are adjourned. Once again